Hello and welcome to Find Last Occurrence. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Hey, let's just jump right in. I was recently asked how to find the last occurrence of an item in a column. In other words, what is the last transaction for item A? So it would be this one. What's the last transaction for item C? It would be this one. For E would be this. For D would be this. And you get the idea. So, of course, Excel, many ways to accomplish this. In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use XLOOKUP to, to do this. So, equals XLOOKUP, and we wanna ask XLOOKUP to go find this, comma, in here, comma, and return a value from here. Now, if I just close that function and hit enter, it's actually going to return the first occurrence. So in other words, 1003, it searches from top to bottom by default. But here's the thing. What we can do is hit comma, 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 and that will get us to search mode where we can ask the XLOOKUP function to search last to first. So that would be minus one, close the function, hit enter, and now it starts from the bottom and searches up. So A is 1010, A is 1010. If we do C, we get 1009, and E would be 1008, and I think we got it. And D would be 1006, and we got it, okay? Um, what about getting the amount? Basically the same thing, equals X lookup. Go find this, comma, in here, comma, return a value from here, comma, 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 and search mode is minus one, last to first, close the function, hit enter, and now we should have 308, which we do, and that looks good. And what about returning the row number of this last transaction? Well, here's the deal. X lookup appears to return a cell value, right? But depending on what's going on, we can actually use the range reference that it returns instead of the cell value. In other words, if we use a row function and then use XLOOKUP inside of that, so XLOOKUP, go find this, comma, in here, comma, return what? We could actually return any of these, it wouldn't matter, that's fine, and comma, 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 minus one, close function, and close the row function. So what's really gonna happen is XLOOKUP returns a range, and depending on what's going on, it might just return the cell value from that range or that cell, and that's what we saw in the previous two formulas. But since it returns a range, we can actually use that in a variety of other ways and with other functions. So if we wrap, it, if we wrap the row function around XLOOKUP, then it's gonna give us the row number of that reference. So we hit enter, and we get 23. And so A is 23. C would be 22, that looks good. E would be 21, that looks good. And D should be 19, and yes, I think we got it. Okay, cool? All right, now here's one more little bonus thing. Let's say we want Excel to actually identify the last transaction. Well, we can use that row function again along with conditional formatting. So what we do is we select our data range, conditional formatting, new rule, and the rule that we want is to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And what we do is we basically write a, a formula that returns true or false. And if it's true, the formatting is applied. So we want Excel to apply the formatting when the row is equal to this value, right? So when the row of that cell that's evaluated is equal to 23, then apply the format. What format? Well, we just hit format. We could pick anything we want. I'll just go with something like this. That's fine. Click OK and OK. And so now Excel identifies this row. And if we go with B, we get this. C is this. D and E. And I think we got it. Cool. All right. Hey, hopefully this helps. Thanks. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 